Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, I'm going to talk about the next great speaker designers. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about a group of people that are going to give Andrew Jones a run for his money. So the designers of this speaker are named Hayden, Kian, and Adam. And they come out of, out of a little place called West Valley Junior High. Their teacher's name is Mr. Melton, and he teaches a class called Amped Algebra. It's an AMP Algebra. But it teaches the students how to take actual math and then apply it to real world situations, which should have been taught for a long time because I'm like, when am I going to use this math stuff? When? Well, now the kids can build something. It's also an engineering class and it helps the kids to take a concept, build it, and then decide how it's gonna be manufactured and how it's gonna be sold to the market. So a fantastic class. I met Mr. Melton through Gishelli Labs. Gishelli Labs has done a lot to send out some parts and products to the students to be able to work on different projects. So when they talked to me and asked me if I would talk to Mr. Melton about reviewing their speaker, I said, of course, yes, please. Because if there's one thing I like, it's kids building something, taking an idea, putting it on paper, figuring it out, building it, and then having it. I did that as a kid. Not to this extent, of course, but I love doing that. So the driver they chose is a full range driver. It's the CHN 110. It's a 6.75 inch full range driver with a reported frequency response of, I don't know what the bottom is. I think it's all the way down to 28 Hertz, all the way up to 25,000 kilohertz. To build the enclosure, they used VCarve Pro for the CNC machine. They also did some 3D modeling on, uh, on shape, on shape. 3D modeling software. The enclosure is made from three quarter inch plywood on the sides and three quarter inch Baltic birch for the baffle. It looks great. I think those are great choices and great thicknesses because it reduces the amount of internal bracing that one has to do. But we'll come back to that a little bit later. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. A soundstage and imaging. Since this is a single driver, imaging probably gonna be pretty good. And it was. Miles Davis, so what, off of Kind of Blue. The piano was to the left, the trumpet was in the middle, the drums were to the right. Also had a very good depth of soundstage, so I could definitively tell where each instrument was placed forward to aft. Lateral imaging is pretty much confined to between two speakers, between the speakers. Vertical off access suffers a little bit. To get the best out of this driver, you really need to be on access, which means lined up right in the center of the driver. I do like the choice of putting the driver up top instead of right in the middle. I think it's a good design choice with the overall size of this speaker. How big is the speaker? Well, I'm glad you asked. The front baffle is 10 inches wide. This speaker is 14 and a quarter inches deep and 17 and a half inches tall. The reason they did that was for bass extension. Let's talk about bass. The good news is this speaker has a 6.75 inch driver, which means you can get a fair amount of bass out of this speaker. Intergalactic by Beastie Boys. This speaker did a admirable job of giving an idea of just how much bass is in that song. The real test, however, is Narcissistic Cannibal by Korn. At the one minute mark, there's a doo doo, which goes way, way down. Many speakers that is completely missing, yet can't even tell that it's there. Now, this did not put that, it didn't put the one minute mark on display, but when I leaned in, I could hear it, which means the extension of this driver, the way they designed the box, was perfect for eking out the last bit of bass extension. Bass extension is absolutely phenomenal on this speaker. Bass impact is not in your face, if an enclosure is designed to really bump the bass at a specific frequency, then generally the fall off of the driver goes like this. So instead of it having a smooth roll off to get the best bass extension, you'll have a bump at maybe 60 hertz and then it just goes flat like that. So the design choice here was 
better extension or more impact. The great thing about this speaker is it kind of combines both. So there are speakers out there that have a lot bigger bass impact, but not a lot of speakers out there that have a roll off that equals these speakers. So great job. Let's talk about mid range. Mid range. Hey Jude by, I don't know. Do you know who that song's by? Hey Jude. Hey Jude. I'm sure it's been covered a bunch of times, but this one was by the Beatles. Vocals were clear, crystal, separated, a little bit thin. That's a function of the driver though, not really a function of the speaker in general. I'd rather trade fullness in the vocals for clarity. So I think vocals are clearly defined and there's nothing being lost from a detail retrieval standpoint. Something in the Way by Nirvana off the MTV Unplugged record. Acoustic guitars were very pleasant, still a little bit lean. Kurt Cobain's voice was also detailed forward in the sound stage, but not too in your face. Surprised how well this speaker did mid-range. Shoot to Thrill by ACDC, not quite as full as I'd like to hear it, but again, that is a function of the driver, not the speaker design. Wherever I May Roam by Metallica, great combination of weighty, <clears throat> that part. Great combination of that and detail. So I think the advantages you get from using a full range driver is there's a very cohesive frequency response. The disadvantage of that driver is however that driver is voiced is what you're getting. You can't really tweak it too much. Overall, I think mid-range is excellent, leans a little bit lean. Let's talk about treble. Treble on this speaker was surprisingly good for a full range driver. I didn't really know what to expect because I've never listened to a full range single driver design speaker. Treble is probably the weak link here. Although in the frequency response, it is very apparent. It's not necessarily the most natural sounding. Back to Hey Jude, tambourines were a little bit spice spicy. Hey Jude. <laughs> so that part. And then cymbals were also a little bit spicy. Again, not a function of the design, a function of the driver. Overall treble here, a little bit peaky, but if you're after a full range driver experience, I doubt there are probably better drivers out there that will handle treble as well as this one did. If you'd have told me this is a two-way speaker, I probably would have believed you. The performance one is getting out of this driver is pretty remarkable. What are my final thoughts? The designers of this speaker, Ken, Adam, Hayden, for a first swing at a speaker, I think this is a home run. So kudos. Most of the sonic issues that I heard or didn't particularly like for me personally were due to the driver. So there's nothing really, there's nothing really that they could have done to mitigate that. With the enclosure design, although three quarter inch was chosen, to limit the amount of bracing that needed to be done on the enclosure. I still think this enclosure could use a few gussets on the inside and maybe even a crossbar across the middle of the speaker to really just make it as solid as a cinder block. To see if there are any resonance issues in the enclosure, one can get a Umic Pro microphone and use Rue, R-E-W, to see, take a look at the waterfall and see what frequencies are kind of coming forward. You can test multiple enclosure designs using that method. It's not too expensive and I'm sure, I would hope that the school would buy you a Umic Pro. If they don't, let me know because I think we can work something out. For port modeling and enclosure design, or as far as volume goes, there's a piece of software which is free called WinISD. WinISD lets you tune the enclosure to whatever frequency you want it to be. And then it gives you the length of the port, depending upon the size, of course. I think that would be a great way to take the enclosure and the port design to the next level. You can do all sorts of things, slot ports, round ports, all the ports free software, you just put your driver parameters into it and then you start playing around with tuning frequencies. From an aesthetic perspective, I love the two-tone color. I love the choice of Baltic birch on the front. You don't have to do a whole lot. If you ever wanna take this speaker to market, I think you should look at some veneer. Veneering this speaker, maybe use MDF instead of plywood and Baltic birch. Baltic birch is easier in the short term. I think veneer in the long term looks a lot better, more professional, and if you put enough poly on it, it will seal those edges right over and look exactly like a factory speaker, which you guys could be. 
A speaker factory. Kian, Adam, and Hayden have a bright future ahead of them, whether it's designing speakers or designing bridges. Mr. Melton really needs to be commended because he's taken something that can be really esoteric, as in math, and actually applying it real world, making a product, and then helping the students figure out how to market it and manufacture it. I wish I had Mr. Melton when I was in junior high. Maybe I would have made a speaker back then. But it wouldn't be nearly as good as this speaker, so great job to Hayden, Adam, and Kian at West Valley Junior High. Great job to Mr. Melton. My only advice to you guys is to keep building. Build 10 speakers and then build 10 more. I'd love to see what you come up with for a two-way design with some crossover building. And if you're ever interested in starting to design a crossover, you can look at another free piece of software, I almost said hardware, called CrossSim, X-Sim. You can download it, you put in driver parameters, frequency responses, and then you start to model a crossover, whether it be a first order, second order, third order, band pass, High pass, low pass, whatever you want. It's a great way to kind of get you three-fourths of the way there. And then you can tweak the rest of it by ear. What a fun project. Great job to everybody involved. I couldn't be happier. And if you keep doing this, you're going to give Andrew Jones and everybody over at JBL, Polk, ELAC a run for their money. So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash a cheap audio man. You can also use the thanks button down at the bottom. It's next to the share button. You can give me a couple of bucks, buy me a cup of coffee or two, but don't feel compelled to give. This will not be an affiliate link. However, I will talk to Mr. Melton. I think maybe we can do something as a community to help these students out, maybe fund some future projects. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Maybe Maybe you will be lucky enough someday to buy a speaker from the talented students at West Valley Junior High. So listen to some music and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.